Victoria Washington, and this is my informative speech. As a little kid, all of you guys have had a favorite place, whether it be the mall, the playground, the baseball field, or the football field. But for me as a little kid, it was the ocean. I loved it so much. But I made the wrong decision by seeing Jaws, which created a fear of sharks in me. Whenever we go to the beach, I hated it. Like, Mom, I don't want to go in the water. Don't make me go in there. A shark's going to come and eat me. And even hearing any news about shark attacks, I was like, oh my gosh, Mom, that could be me one day. But little did I know, the shark attacks don't happen very often. Did you know that you have a greater chance of getting struck by lightning than getting attacked by a shark? According to the, the International Shark Attack file, the U.S. averaged about 61 reported attacks, currently the most in the world in 2013. But only three were fatal. This was only in the U.S., and the world and worldwide rates should also be taken into account. So in 2013, there were only 118 attacks, 87 injuries, and 16 fatality, fatali fatalities reported worldwide. This really isn't a big, this isn't really a big rate. Brian Henwork of National Geographic News say that every year there are about 50 to 70 confirmed shark attacks, 5 to 10 fatalities in the world. In the U.S. alone, lightning strikes kill more than 41 people each year. So this kind of proves that lightning can strike more than actual shark attack in the ocean. Edwin Edmonds of Kiger and Animal Planet stated that in their, in their article, 10 Most Dangerous Sharks, only three species are mainly involved in many attacks. And usually a dozen are involved, but there are three main ones. There are great whites, bull sharks, and tiger sharks. These sharks are mostly involved in human attacks because they have a broad spectrum of prey. And because of our size, our, our per their perception to sharks, we may be categorized into their prey. Because of our size, we can be, we can be perceived as seals and other fish. And Modern Marine Lab Laboratory reported about shark attacks, that besides the ocean, shark attacks can happen in river estuaries and also river mouths opening to the ocean. So shark attacks don't always happen in the ocean. Usually they happen in shallow waters close to the shore, sandbars, and also in the deep waters. So unless you go into those areas, attacks will be more probable. But also sharks can go into these river estuaries. This is the reason because when river mouths are open to the ocean, there's easier access for sharks to come in and out of those channels. And because there's a mixture of fresh and salt water, sharks are able to adapt a little bit easier to the changing of weather and also to the changing of the temperature and the condition of the water. And also there are, three, there are two main reasons why shark attacks can happen. And these can be categorized into unprovoked and provoked attacks. Unprovoked attacks are caused by no, no, by no main reason. Humans are not at fault and neither are sharks. It is just the nature. What can be caused, what can cause a shark attack can be migratory patterns which can collide with human activities such as swimming, boating, surfing, even spearfishing. Ralph Colliger of the shark attacks of the 20th century in his book stated that another cause of unprovoked attacks can be caused by their, migratory pro by their migratory patterns because whenever they're moving from ocean to ocean and sea to sea, they're moving from different temperatures to follow their prey. So when they're moving into these different temperatures, they usually go to warmer waters, this is where a lot of humans are. This is where we are boat we're boating, swimming, doing whatever that we humans do in the water. And whenever they come into our whenever they come to this area, there's also the possibility of a shark attack. Dr. And, uh, Dr. Richard Edredder, shark biologist and senior scientist of the Green Marine Institute, points out that another reason of an of unprovoked shark attack is mistaken identity in his article, Anatomy of Shark Attacks. Mistaken identity can be, <coughs> can be categorized in many different things. For two main reasons, mistaken identity can be caused because of the shark's perception. Whenever we swimmers are wearing brightly colored swimming, swimsuits or any kind of contrasting colors, this can kind of confuse the shark because they're perceiving us as different kinds of fish. As you know, different fish are very colorful, like angelfish, um, clownfish. They all have these really brightly colored coats and scales, so this may be perceived as fish 
and so the sharks may think that we're food. And also another cause of this can be whenever we wear shiny jewelry. To sharks, they see the shiny jewelry as, ooh, fish scales, this might be food for me today. So they, mo they may go into your area or wherever you're swimming and try to attack you, but only to investigate. And provoked attacks are the other category that can happen for the shark attack. In his book, Richard um, Collier of 20th Century Shark Attacks argued that these attacks are only caused by human actions. These can be caused whenever humans are swimming at dusk or dawn, and this is because sharks are primarily feeding at this time. So any sudden movement in the water will make them react to this. And also, swimming with open cuts. Sharks have a keen sense of smell, so any small amount of blood can attract a shark from a mile to like 10 miles away, closer to your area. In conclusion, sharks may cause fear, confusion, and questioning as to why they happen. But shark attacks aren't, aren't as frequent and very rare. They're a natural phenomenon that can occur in multiple contexts. And I think the next time that I go to the beach, I'll have a little bit more reassurance, but I still think I'll look out for any dorsal fins.